Right, so uh, welcome everyone. I'm Alana Pfeiffer from University of Technology, Sydney at the Australian Centre for Public History. Um, welcome to the August session, can't believe we're here already, of the Digital Histories Seminar Series. And um, I'd like to begin tonight, um, as we do every sem seminar session, by uh, acknowledging the Indigenous owners of the lands around Australia. I know that increasingly we're coming in from all different parts of the country. Um, I myself am currently sitting on the land of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation, sovereignty of which was never ceded. Uh, and I do invite you all to put into the chat whereabouts in the country uh, the land that you're sitting on, uh, one of which peoples it belongs to. So uh, tonight's seminar session is focused, as you might be able to see from the background behind Deb, on the Honey Project, the Humanities Networked Infrastructure. And we are joined tonight by Professor Deb Verhoeven, who is Canada 150 Research Chair in Gender and Cultural Informatics at the University of Alberta in Canada. Before that, she was Dean of Engagement at UTS, which is where I got the pleasure to meet her and get to know her. Um, and she's really one of the, uh, if not the leading scholar of digital humanities in Australia. Uh, so, uh, Deb will be talking to us tonight about the Honey Project, of which she was the inaugural director of uh, the Humanities Network Infrastructure Project and the, one of the key architects uh, behind the development of that project. So, tonight's session is very much a workshop style session. Um, we're going to start by getting a bit of an introduction from Deb about the Honey Project, um, the, the you know, rationale behind it and what it was set up to do and the uh, design thinking that feeds into it. Uh, and then we're going to have a chance to have a hands-on showcase of what you can actually do within Honey and you'll all get a chance to try it out for yourselves. Uh, so, without further ado, I will hand over to Deb. Thanks, Alana. Um, I don't want to take up too much time because, um, as Alana and I know from running these workshops in the past, the best bit of this is when you get started and, and start to muck around inside Honey. Um, I'm going to say it's unbreakable, although every time I say that, someone does manage to break it inadvertently and never but never mind because that's how we move forward so so uh, don't fear breaking it if in fact you do succeed um, no I'm, I'm kind of jesting because it is a very robust platform honey uh, originates if it origin if, it, if it, anything can be said to originate from any one place um, from uh, a pub of course, it passed the pub test um, rather spectacularly. After an unconference that was held in Melbourne, a large number of very early um, progenitors of the digital humanities were sitting around chatting about their data sets. And we had all built data sets in our respective research areas. Mine at the time was cinema studies. There were people there who were literary studies experts. There were people there from uh, different archive studies backgrounds and so on. And we had all, for one reason or another, uh, undertaken to, to build collections, digital collections, um, what are sometimes now known as collections as data. And we were sitting around saying how it was a real shame that we had done this uh, in a disconnected way that we hadn't um, had the opportunity or good fortune to work closely together and collaborate as we built our collections. So consequently, our collections were built to different standards in different technologies. They were, they were unable to, able to be interoperated. And in a sense, we were emulating a situation that was occurring more broadly in our research areas because the archives, museums and libraries that we were working closely with often, and in fact, sometimes trying to fill gaps for by building our collections. Uh, many of those places uh, also were unable to interoperate their collections. And politically, there was a, a lack of interoperation between those institutions as well. And we felt that this was hindering research. It was impossible to really do good research in the humanities that covered more than one archive without expending an enormous amount of energy and effort to try and extract the information we needed from different environments and then we would have to, in our own 
environments are on our own desktops interoperate that information and make sense of it. So uh, that made um, working in ways that enabled complex or nuanced questions very difficult. If I wanted to, for example, find out how many women were authors of stage plays that were also novels and then became films about the Great War, that would be an exercise that would take a very, very long time, simply because all the different information that I'd be examining would be held by different institutions and in different technologies and, and different data banks. And that still applied, even though um, all of us were trying to, in a sense, as I said earlier, fix the problem of why our data or our research interests weren't in mainstream collections either. So as we're sitting here, pon sitting there pondering that, um, we decided or determined that we would like to work closely together and try and build a system that enabled the data to be interoperated, our collections. And along came a, a federal government initiative called NECTAR, um, which has, it's a great acronym, I can't remember what it stands for, the National E Communications Technologies something research. I don't know what the A is. Um, but, you know, uh, and they, they put out a call for expressions of interest for uh, initiatives, innovative initiatives of significance that would um, create e-research capability in Australia. And suddenly our little pub chat became um, a promise in a way. And we were um, able to form a consortium, which we called Honey in honor of Nectar. Uh, Honey being the humanities networked infrastructure, H-U-N-I. Sometimes people will call it Hooney. I think they've listened to too much ACDC or something like that, but it's Honey. Honey, Nectar, it's, it's kind of easy to remember that way. Um, so, um, we uh, built a, a consortium made up of, a, of between 16 and 19 institutions um, and over a three year period we built Honey. Honey is a publicly accessible platform that interoperates data from research collections including part of the GLAM sector um, but also significant university driven research collections in one place and it enables you to search it. Now that in and of itself is remarkable, but there's another remarkable thing about Honey, and that is that Honey was not built in a standard set of ways that you would you might expect um, an interoperable collection to be built. We didn't create an Uber ontology that standardized and structured the information like a library or an archive would. We tried to build it from the principles of humanities scholarship. So we, we built it from the bottom up rather than the top down. And what that meant was we built it using, rather than um, structured categories to describe different types of information, we built it in a way that enabled researchers to create links between all the elements inside Honey in their own words, using what we call a vernacular ontology. Ontology just means how the world is put together. So we were enabling researchers to use expressive or evocative or poetic language if they wanted to, to um, in a way describe the strength or paucity of a link between things, to contest other people's linking of things inside the collection, uh, and to interpret other people's ways of linking things and to follow those trails of links visually. So when you hop inside Honey in a minute, you'll see that you will be able to do this yourself, but also connect your work to other people's work and follow these trails of relationships. And in a way we've been able to create inside a digital platform, that experience of walking into a library or an archive and trailing through the shelves and finding things serendipitously that you might not have thought you would be able to find. Um, just using a logical search. Most digital platforms, you need to know what's already in the platform before you can search for it. You have to know what's there. Honey actually enables you to just walk through digital collections using the links put there by people. One of the most important things about those links, and this is where it really is about the humanities, is it's not driven by what we would call positivist information science principles where you can only describe what exists. Honey lets you also describe what doesn't exist a not relationship. So Alana is not Deb's sister. That's uh, breathtaking in a, 
a glam environment, typically you can't do that, not, not without invoking very complex and, and kind of structured ways of producing the knot. But of course, in the humanities, that's how we drive at knowledge. We, we sort of go, oh, well, Deb says Alana's not her sister, but Alana says they are. Who's the expert here and how will we interpret that? And how do we come up with a different way of thinking about what they mean by sister in that context and so on? And so that level of contestation that drives, not contestation as refusal, but contestation as um, an opening for interpretation, a generative way of thinking about how knowledge is created. That's what Honey lets us do. Uh, I'm going to stop there because I, I really do want you to get inside Honey and, and just play around with it. The more people that use Honey, the richer it is and the, the more exciting it is as an experience because you'll just be able to see how your research adds value to someone else's research at the same time. Great, thanks, Deb. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And uh, before you do sort of jump right in, I'll uh, run you through a sort of brief tutorial of uh, what you can do in Honey and, and what it looks like. Um, but, you know, you're welcome to sort of minimise this screen and, and perhaps open up your web browser if you want to follow along um, as I'm doing that. So firstly, in the chat, I if you scroll back up to the top, I did put in uh, the website, which is just honey, H-U-N-I dot net dot A-U. And if you go to that page, uh, you'll arrive at the home page where you're invited to search honey. Um, and the theme of uh, tonight that we thought we would explore would be COVID inspired as we face yet more lockdowns and extended lockdowns. Um, and so let's just try searching quarantine. So the great thing about Honey is, you know, we could search absolutely anything really and get results. I think you know, there's uh, no limit on really what you can search for, what you could potentially build collections around. And that becomes clear once you have conducted a search and you can go in and see you know, what's there and who the data providers for Honey now. So doing that search on quarantine, uh, over 2,000 results. You can see that all the search results uh, do get organised into these different categories, um, concepts, events, organisations, persons, place and work. Uh, you can see that with that search term, the vast majority of things have been uh, defined as works, although there are re results returned for at least each category. And then if we look down at the sort of data providers and where the information is coming from, this tells us a bit more and also tells us something about Honey and the sorts of collections um, that you have access to through this amazing resource. So there's the FAI film collection, um, the Ausstage, Auslit, um, so, you know, thinking about creative works. There's also things like the Australian Diction of Biography. So, you know, people who might be coming through that. A um, number of, sort of fiction collections, but also then the Encyclopedia of Australian Science. So, you know, great opportunities there for bringing sort of STEM into discussion with the humanities uh, through this research. And you can see with a, a search term like quarantine, um, 22 of the results are coming from that encyclopedia. Um, Find and Connect, Encyclopedia of Melbourne are all there. Um, not really many results returned, although a few from Find and Connect for the quarantine query. Um, but, you know, depending on the sorts of information you're looking for, or, um, you know, if you're searching for people, or if you're searching for other search terms, you might uh, see more there. Um, Obituaries Australia, Museum Victoria, uh, and you can see for this search, and I would say for the vast majority of searches that you get conducted, the uh, place where you're going to see the most results returned are, of course, um, a fabulous trove. But you know, this is a great opportunity to bring the resources from Trove into discussion with all these other collections listed here. So searching is just that easy. Um, and then 
obviously all your search results are here to the right and you can go in to view the full record and get more information about that, including going and looking at the original record um, from the source data provider um, to get more information on those. So that is searching and how you would start to build collections and establish links. So let's think more about collections. So here, apart from searching just all the works from the different data provider, you can actually see the publicly listed collections. Not all collections are publicly listed. Some people can create collections and choose to keep those collections private. Um, but here we can see and also search the uh, public collections. So we could search something like um, disease and uh, see, for instance, um, the collection I created a while back on uh, venereal disease. Uh, as I said, because of the breadth of resources from the different data providers, there's really no limit to the types or number of uh, collections that you might choose to put together on any one subject. And, um, you know, two people might approach a sort of similar topic uh, or, or theme for a collection and, and come at it from two, two different ways and therefore, you know, collect uh, different information or establish different links within that. In terms of the types of collections that we do sort of see coming through and being established um, because of all that great sort of, you know, off-slit, um, off-stage, uh, there's, you know, quite a number of collections that have been built around uh, different bodies of creative works. So, you know, um, creative works on that fall within a particular genre or a particular uh, theme. So for instance, here we've got a collection on science fiction. Uh, when you look at collections, they will return the sort of records that are part of that, but you can also, if you click on the title, see them visualized dynamically and click through them in that way. Um, other sorts of collections um, could be around public issues as we're going to, explore tonight with the theme of sort of disease and quarantine um, and uh, lockdown. Um, and so this public collection here, which I think is one of the biggest, uh, is all on uh, anti-nuclear and uh, nuclear proliferation. And if we look, you can see, I think this was one of the ones that really did um, almost break honey at one point. Is that right? Well, it really changed the way we thought about how we would use the technology. So this collection was built by a scientist. So it really was one of those, let's just put everything in a box. <laughs> and you'll see that honey sort of struggles to actually return or render um, yeah. while we're all on Zoom, the proliferation of results. But what this meant was we then uh, sat down and had to think about how we might use the underlying technology, which is what's called graph technology, to enable people to find uh, ways to simplify pathways without reducing complexity. Again, another kind of facet of the humanities. We, we quite like complexity. We don't want to necessarily reduce complexity. Um, we want to preserve it, uh, but, but sometimes you need a pathway through it. And so using the graph technologies in, the, we'll probably have to handle this in a different workshop, but or you can just play around in honey, you'll find it's quite easy. You can identify the shortest pathway or the neatest pathway between two parts of honey, between any two entities in honey, and that will get you that, that kind of clean line that you might not be able to see because the visualization is so overwhelming. Uh, so another collection where we might have a, a slightly nicer uh, visualization, um, which is, but is still a sort of substantial uh, collection, uh, is this one, um, which is on uh, James Cassius Williamson. Um, and so, you know, this is another type of collection people can build uh, is, you know, around um, people at the centre and then building up the sorts of social networks or institutions that that individual is part of into an interesting um, biographical approach. Um, so Williamson was a theatre um, entrepreneur. And so when we go in and sort of see the collection, we can see that there's a number of theatres that they're connected to uh, and another uh, number of other people who are involved in the theatre industry. And uh, you can sort of you know, click on those records and um, potentially 
you know, see different information about um, how that individual is connected to them. Uh, one of the other big collections here from this one from Deb, um, you know, which is also around um, a sort of public organization or institution. So another really interesting way of um, thinking about um, the works, events connected to a particular organization, institution or event um, is the Sunshine Harvester. So the Sunshine Harvester company was a major manufacturer uh, and involved in a very important legal decision in the early 1900s that gave us uh, the start of the Australian minimum wage. And if we go into there, you can see uh, a number of uh, works or items uh, connected to the harvester, uh, in particular lots of advertising, of course, from Trove for harvester uh, products. And then another type of collection that we can think about, and this is something we're going to explore more today, Deb's set us a bit of a, a challenge that we're going to look at uh, later, is the idea of connecting um, a diverse um, items within the connection and you know can you build a pathway between uh, two seemingly uh, different uh, concepts or, or works or individuals uh, and so here someone has uh, built a collection to map out how they might connect someone like uh, Dame Edna to Sigmund Freud um, and done it in uh, not too many steps. And uh, finally, just on that, and in terms of linking, um, so collections and, you know, is part of it. And often I think that's the first thing that people are sort of driven to do when they're introduced to honey is let's find all the things and just put them in a bag. And that's my collection. Um, but one of the really interesting things to do is actually to concentrate not so much on just putting everything in the box, but building up those links. So here, for instance, I've created a collection for Ned Kelly. Uh, and there's only actually two records within this specific collection. You might think, that's odd. There would be many more things associated with Ned Kelly that you could put all in the box, all in the collection, um, you know, and have it all sitting there. And that's true. But what I wanted to do uh, in building this collection was really explore the links and so in terms of the collection, the two records are just the person records for Ned Kelly, and there were two person records for Ned Kelly. One, a biography of Ned Kelly, um, like a, a biographical record for Ned Kelly from Ostage, uh, and one, the biographical record for Ned Kelly from Edward Kelly, um, for Edward Kelly, rather the proper name for Ned Kelly from uh, the Australian Dictionary of Biography. And so what I used did was, you know, take the only two person records for Ned Kelly, put them in the collection, and with the Ned Kelly record from Oz Stage, I've used that to link to all the creative works that are about Ned Kelly that I was able to find through Honey. And then with the Edward Kelly, the sort of proper person record, um, for Ned Kelly from the Australian Diction and Biography, I actually connected Ned Kelly to all the other person records uh, within Honey that uh, connect up to sort of Ned Kelly the person. So if we click on Edward Kelly, we can see these are all the persons um, from that you know have are able to be retrieved by Honey who connect up to Ned Kelly in some way. So for instance, there's his sister, Kate Kelly here. And if we click on Kate, uh, she herself is connected to a number of other people, including there are other sort of person records where I've been able to identify sort of same as uh, relationships for her uh, and also creative works about Kate Kelly. Um, and, you know, people like uh, Jesse Dowsett, even who was the uh, train driver who uh, you know, took the police to Glen Rowan, and that factor has been mentioned in his obituary, which appears in Obituaries Australia, that he was a, a train driver in the Nick Kelly case, um, and so he's able to be connected there. And then, uh, interestingly, also what happens when you start linking people up is where, whereas I personally sort of created the links 
between Kate Kelly and Ed Kelly and then Kate Kelly to these other things um, where other people have created links between people. Um, those will also start to appear if you click on. So for instance, someone else had already done significant work on linking Sidney Nolan, who of course um, did a number of paintings famously of Ned Kelly. And so when I click, uh, when I linked Edward Kelly to Sidney Nolan, that then linked me up to this other collection that someone had created around Sidney Nolan. So you start to get quite these, you know, complicated, complex ways of thinking about, um, you know, how are people connected and how's there's, you know, relationships between works and uh, people's connected. All right, uh, so that gives you a bit idea of what you can do in Honey and it's very, very easy to get started. So if you haven't already opened up a honey window i really invite you to do that now so you can start jumping in and play along and the first thing that uh, you're going to need to do once you have opened up honey.net.au is you're going to want to uh, sign in so at the moment i'm uh, signing signed in as alana piper and uh, there's lots of options for signing in you can do it through like a google account facebook account um, GitHub, you know, whatever is easiest for you. So can I get a sort of thumbs up from people once they have navigated to Honey? Some people find Facebook difficult to sign in with. So if you can use something like Google, it might be a little easier. Yeah, I use my Google account. I find that's easy. And the other thing to reassure people is uh, Honey does not keep any data about you. Um, it's uh, you sign in simply so you can own your contributions. So part of the philosophy of Honey is around provenance. Everything has a situation or a, a site or a context, including the links that you make and the collections that you build. Um, and that's the only reason uh, we ask you to sign in. All right, so Renee is giving me a thumbs up. So I'm taking it that people uh, have managed to sign in. Um, if not, you know, shouldn't take you that long. Um, so once you have signed in, uh, you should then get this additional uh, access point at the top of the menu, which is My Honey. And when you click on My Honey, uh, it comes up with my collections, my links, and your profile. So for instance, if I go in, I can see I've got four different uh, collections of which I am the owner. So you can go back and actually, you know, once you've established collections, you can uh, download and export those collections as CSV files. And you can also see links that you have created under my links. So how do we go about uh, creating a collection? Well, once you've signed in, it's a simple matter of going back to the search. And this time I will search for disease. Uh, and just under 8,500 results for disease. Now, if I wanted to add these items to a collection, I could do that simply by clicking the add to the collection button. Uh, on the right hand side of the record, you'll see that there's two buttons. The first one's the add to collection button. It looks like it's three little bits of paper with a plus sign. And if you click on that, you can either choose an existing collection or you could create a new collection. Um, so I will do that now. Uh, you can choose to make the collection public or if you don't select that option, it will keep it private. Uh, and you can also add collection notes. So, um, you know, whatever the case may be, the uh, schema that you have used, the um, for adding items to a collection, um, you know, what the collection is about. I'll just put test demo for now. And I have added that record and you can see I've added it. I could remove it if I wanted. All right, uh, and the other thing, and then once you're done, so I could keep on adding other 
records simply by clicking the plus button. Um, but once you are satisfied that you have added all the records you want, you can just go close up here and then you're done with uh, adding items to the collection now. Uh, so the next thing I'll quickly show you is how to do links. So again, very simple, there's just this button here. Uh, and what I'm wanting to do here is link these two items. I've got a work that's wolf disease and an event that's wolf disease. And I know that this event is a performance of this work. So I'm going to link these two. So I do this again, just by clicking the link button and it's uh, prompting me at the top here to select the other record that I wanna link it to. And so I will select that one as well. And so now I've got two records, both called wolf disease, but one's a work and one's an event. And uh, I have to establish what sort of relationship is between those. Um, and based on the sorts of categories, if it was two persons, uh, it would come up with a sort of list of different suggestions, could be a sort of same as relationships that this Edward Kelly is actually the same person as Neb Kelly, or um, you know, sister of or brother of, or whatever the case may be. Um, but because this is a, a work and a performance, uh, one of the options that I'm given is a performance of type relationship. So that's the one I want, will, uh, click, but if I wanted to establish a relationship between the records and, and none of the sort of descriptors that are available seem to really fit the sort of relationship that I'm seeing or the link that I'm wanting to establish, I would also be able to simply create a, a new link and specify what relationship or what type of relationship existed between these two entities. Um, I could specify that that's either a relationship that's the same in both directions, such as the same as relationship, or um, I could specify, you know, what are the sort of two ends of the relationship. So One of the things I've found when people build relationships is they tend to emulate the new, what they think is the neutrality or the neutral voice of libraries and archives. And Honey really doesn't need you to do that. You know, Honey works from the basis that there is no neutrality in the archive. So you could write wolf disease is a terrible piece of writing yeah. that was redeemed in the play. <laughs> you know, you can do, you can write whatever you like um, and be evaluative and provocative. And as I said before, poetic and expressive um, as the case may be, because you're going to own that description. Yes, that's right. So, um, you know, you don't have to be wary that you're imposing this for everyone. Um, you can make these things public, um, as people choose to, um, but not obliged to. And then um, we're going to save that link. Uh, and then once you are done uh, linking things, you simply click close. Um, and so that's basically it, creating collections and creating links. and so I'm going to hand it back to Deb. I did in the chat uh, earlier put the two links that Deb is wanting us to work for. So just let me find those. Um, and I will, Deb, did you want to bring, bring me to stop sharing and you to bring those up or did you want me to just? Yeah, let's, let's just do that and um, okay. we'll get people started. So everyone's got honey open. We're going to, um, do a little fun exercise. It's like six degrees of separation. And in fact, if you start getting into Honey, you'll be able to see that we, um, you can measure the um, distance of links between people. We call it the Bacon measurement um, after Kevin Bacon and the six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Um, so what you can do with uh, the first record right at the top, which is the one that uh, says ADB star 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 person 5024, if you click on that record, that's going to be your starting record. So you might want to add that to your collection for today. And then what we want to see is how you can get from that record in six steps to the record underneath it the one that says Auslitz star 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 person 6408553. Um, so we're gonna do an experiment. It's this little um, experiment in 
making trails or relationships between concepts and ideas and people and, and works. If we can get from uh, the first record, which if you've got it up now, you'll see is a, a record for a man named David Andrade. And the idea is to get from David Andrade in six steps to another person, a man called Clive Palmer, probably someone you're a little more familiar with. Um, I started this exercise this afternoon just to see, you know, what, what it might turn up. And um, I went down a David Andrade rabbit hole, which I am yet to emerge from. <laughs> I hope that um, we haven't sent you off down the same rabbit hole, but you actually have um, a bit more of a, a learning experience than a losing experience. Um, I totally lost myself in that rabbit hole. Um, but anyway, um, have fun with it. Um, my suggestion is um, to start building your collections from David Andrade. Do a quick search on David Andrade in Honey, see what turns up, and that might give you some hints on how to get from David Andrade to Clive Palmer. Yeah. Also, um, don't forget you can click on the original record for David Andrade and, and read the description in the Australian Diction biography, and that might also prompt it. I absolutely yeah. recommend that you do that. Yeah. And um, and yeah, and in fact, when you click on the trove records, it's fun to go back to the. You only get the first little bit of the text of the the article, so you'll need to click on the original record to read the full article. Um, Alana and I are going to stay online, so you're more than welcome to put your hand up, ask questions, um, put things in the chat. Um, yeah. You know, we that was the, the quickest ever explanation of honey, so we appreciate that it might take a little bit longer for things yeah. to sink. And and yeah, and do feel free to ask questions, and we might sort of like check back in fifteen minutes and invite people to share how they're going. Um, yeah. 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 Have fun. Have fun. <laughs> I'm starting my collection now too.
So how are people going? Do feel free to unmute and ask questions if you have questions. We'll pop them in the chat. So Susan's saying haven't made much progress so far. Um, do you want? Do you have questions that you would like answered, Susan, or any ways that we can help direct you? I think I'll, I'll get those. Just trying to play around and sort of get in the right headspace. So. Yeah. No, I think that's a good approach, um, you know, just to have a play and, you know, there's lots of, uh, you know, ways that you might build up your collections or, or make connections, link things up. Thank
I suppose another way that people could try it if you're um, tired of the David Andrade side of the equation would be to try from Clive, Clive Palmer and working backwards as well. Clever. <laughs> anyone found out anything interesting about David Andrade so far that they'd like to share with the group? I read his, um, his book, which I discovered as part of the biography this afternoon, The Melbourne Riots and How Harry Holdfast and His Friends Emancipated the Workers, a realistic novel. Um, Great and title. It's Sad. a fantastic title. I was a little disturbed. I think his daughter's name was Hypatia. And in the novel, the central character, who is clearly David Andrade, um, is, uh, has a lover. And the lover's name is Hypatia, which is, I think, his daughter's name, which so that was a little disturbing. Mm. Um, anyway, it's a rousing novel about the proletariat uprising. What I think what's stunning me just going through and searching around David Andrade is um, how uh, not vaccinating your children was not just a crime, but it was a newsworthy event. And so there are um, bazillions of records in Trove of people being taken to court for failing to vaccinate their children and, their, and uh, were fined as a result. Um, um, if I, I might apologise to everyone who might be looking at me. My contortions are because I have a new puppy and um, she's just been spayed and has come out of the two-day torpor with a new renewed and vigorous biting frenzy of energy.
I'm just going to mute myself so you don't hear me scream. Renee's asked a question, can you only search a single concept or person at a time? Can you combine search terms? Uh, yes, I believe you can. Is that right, Deb? Uh, there are no sort of search operators, like you can't do a Boolean search and, and so on. So you can't pr really do compound searches. If you popped um, two words in the search box, um, like I, I search for anti-vaccination, it will look for both words in the first instance and then I think it will go through and give you results for anti and results for vaccination further down the search. I've never got far enough into the search because Trove always overwhelms me with um, uh, too many hits. But um, if you just type in anti and the separate word vaccination, you'll see anti-vaccination comes up first. So it's assuming there's inverted commas around your term. But if I try anti-vaccination in inverted commas and Android. Yes, so I just use put anti-vaccination into a clause into inverted commas and then threw in David Andrade's name and it's given me two results. So it's searched on all terms. Right, so has anyone uh, worked out how there might be a link between David Andrade or Clive Palmer yet? Well, even just uh, found interesting material I want to share with the group that I've been able to add to collections or establish links between. Are people ready to hear the answer from Deb yet? Or do you want to keep playing? I think I gave it away. I mean, yeah. they're, both, they're both champions of anti-vaccination. Yeah. Um, and Do you, do you um, want to share the screen and share the... Um, I haven't done my links yet. I've just oh. created a collection and then I'm about to... But I could do it in one link, which is they mm -hmm. are both champions of yeah. the anti-vaccination movement. Um, but what I find interesting about the two of them is, of course, they're p p politically pulls apart. So David Andrade is a foundational anarchist and champion of the 
the workers movement and very active in the labor movement as well. Uh, operated a bookshop, um, really genuinely believed in education and social reform. Uh, Clive Palmer, perhaps less so, <laughs> but they share this common um, uh, antipathy to vaccination. So how did we get from anti-vaxxers being lefties, you know, rabid lefties, to anti-vaxxers being on the exact polar opposite side of the political spectrum? And somewhere in the, the 20th century, that shift occurred. Uh, and I find that fascinating. Um, and I'm sure you could use Honey to try and track where and how and what the beat points are for that. Um, I think it's really, really interesting. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, so this was, you know, largely a fun sort of exercise to connect these polar opposite figures together. But yeah, you could create a great collection on anti-vaccination and exploring the, you know, how that links different people and groups together across time as the uh, ideologies around that perhaps shift. Well, yeah, the underlying logics and, mm -hmm. and, and positioning. And I guess one of the things about Honey is that Honey is focused on this idea that everything is situated in the same way that we started this entire call by asking us to all nominate where we stand um, and, and, um, and, and, and acknowledge that. Honey also says every, everything has a position in a sense in relation to other things. Um, and those relationships can be described in complex and nuanced ways, not just simplistic ways. So here we have anti-vaccination, which you might think of from a contemporary perspective is one particular thing but actually it has a, a complex and nuanced history and it's shifted the ground underneath it has shifted in relation to other aspects of contemporary politics. So I think that, that that's where the value of something like honey comes into force because it's, you know, we would never be able to create a simple category around anti-vaccination and do justice to the complexity of that history. So with the last little while, um, we thought we might set you truly free to build a uh, collections that you like. It could be on taking inspiration, anti-vaccination, quarantine, uh, disease, and uh, you know, searching on those terms or others that might inspire you and seeing what sort of collections and links that you come up with. Or if people have their own research projects that they're working on at the moment that they could see perhaps uh, building interesting links around the concepts and topics and ideas that they're uh, interested in exploring in their research, you know, we'd welcome you to go ahead and uh, have a play in the sandbox of Honey with that um, right now. Um, and we can sort of stay on the line here to direct you, answer questions that you might have. Um, and yeah, you know, you can share your results with the class as you're going along. Yeah, make your collections public and then we can all have a look at what, what we've all done um, and present them as a visualisation, which is always fun to, mm. to watch all the bubbles pop up. So if there are any questions, just feel free to unmute or pop those into the chat. And I, I have uh, just popped the, the link in the chat to Deb's, uh, da David Andre to Clive Palmer and Six Easy Steps collection. As yet unfinished, <laughs> but it will get there. I can do it in one step. I'm just going to do the one thing, which is, you know, they both are champions of the anti-vaccination movements of their era.
Uh, Renee's got to head out early. Thanks for joining us, Renee, and uh, we'll see you next time. And for anyone who uh, does have to leave us early, uh, don't forget we'll be back again next month, as always. We're at the second Thursday of the month, and uh, next month that's the 9th of September, Thursday, and it's uh, Richard Tuppen from UNE who will be taking us through mapping convict landscapes as a digital history slash archaeological project that he's been working on. I can see some people have started interesting collection. We've got Ross working on a collection about the War Memorial and Margaret working on a collection about feminism and documentary, which that would probably interest you, Deb. It certainly does. I might even add some links to that once it's set up, if it's public. Yes, it's in the public yep. collections. Yeah, I just made a public. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so this is a great thing. You can get collaborations of people working on connecting their collections or working with you collaboratively to develop complex ways of thinking about a topic from a slant. So, Margaret, is that a particular research project that you're working on around feminism and documentary at the moment? Or what interested you with that topic? Uh, yep, that's what I'm, I'm working on and researching at the moment for like a very long time. <laughs> Great. I'm going to try and find some films now.
All right, so are there any uh, final questions of the night that people have before we wrap things up? Or any uh, interesting findings that people want to share with their collections? You can see Bill started creating something on the Australian alt-right that looks interesting. I was just wondering how Kit had to link collections together. Haha, you can't. This is a, okay. a frustration. Uh, there are many things on our bucket list. That is definitely one of them um, mm. because that would be really helpful. Um, the idea was that people, we wanted people originally, but of course, as people use the platform, we realise there are different things other people want. Mm -hmm. But originally, we were trying to get people to form pathways through records. Mm. and not just to so you would so you would link through a record so i have linked my jenny thornley collection to your feminism and documentary collection through one record okay. um, and you'll be able to see yeah. that but i had to make up the link because i wasn't actually sure the book that i linked to in fact does mention her um i should have written possibly mentions i can edit yeah, okay the link. um so you should be able to see how you can connect the two and there should be a trail of relationships between our collections. All right. If you click on feminism and documentary in yours. Mm -hmm. Oh, maybe so go to my collection. Right. I, sorry, I have to save the link. So now I've done it. There you go. Let's go to your collection, click on feminism and documentary. And you'll see there's two links. To sorry, feminism and documentary, the book. Uh, okay. Yeah. Okay, and got then, it. And then you click on Jenny Thornley, you'll see I've made a collection called Jenny Thornley. Mm -hmm. And then if you click on that, there's a whole bunch of stuff in there. And now we have a little visualization of a trail of pathways between your interest in feminism and documentary and my interest in Jenny Thornley. Okay, great. And it looks like the experimental feminist documentary collection that you've started is also sort of linked the same way. If you click on uh, Dandy Dust, it sort of looks Yeah, like so I linked Dandy Dust, but I was trying to link the two collections together. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. you have to go through a record. Yeah. But okay. that's a great yeah. question. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so like the going through the feminism and uh, documentary collection does lead you to the feminist uh, experimental mm -hmm. collection by clicking on Dandy Dust, you can see those two collections sort of mm. to each other. This could take many hours of my <laughs> life away. It's kind of fun to do in front Thank of a TV. Gosh, Dan Murphy's is about to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It is a lot of fun. You can export it into a, what we call a CSV file or an Excel spreadsheet um, yeah. if you want a record of it, and it will give you the original links to the original records. So it's a way of um, demonstrating the research you've done in your methods section of a public of a paper or right. a publication and, and gives you that opportunity to reproduce those those resources in a in a different piece of software if you want to. Mm. But it's a good, it gives you a good overview of who's got what and how mm -hmm. people are, are represented differently in different contexts and environments. So uh, Jenny Thornley has a record in the AFI research collection, but she also has a record in, uh, I think, Ostage and, you know, and, and so people turn up in lots of different places and we deliberately didn't disambiguate. So we didn't attempt to collapse multiple records for people into one record, which is what a mm -hmm. typical interoperation project would do. We left it, we left all that nuance there because we figured that for some people, they will know Jenny Thornley as a stage presence, and for other people, they'll know her as a director, a film director, and so on. And so, oh, yeah, you know, people, yeah. people, people work through those interests. And then academic. Yes, mm. exactly. Um, so we leave it all in there. It's all, so you take your pick. Why are you interested in Jenny Thornley? Mm -hmm. Which record will you link to? Mm -hmm. Any other uh, questions or comments or things that people want to share that they found interesting?
it's good that there's obviously activity going on and, and people are obviously having a good play and explore and it might be that you're playing and exploring for the rest of the night, uh, which you're very yeah. welcome to uh, do. But um, yeah, There's a lot we didn't cover. Um, but, you know, for example, um, Margaret, in that little example you've got there of the different three different collections that are all linked, you can mm -hmm. create simple pathways that cut through by using what's called um, graph search. Um, so you can click on one record. Um, I'm going to click on maidens. And then I want to find out what the shortest pathway is from that work to women of vision, for example. Mm -hmm. um, and you can do that. Where's that gone? Ooh, the little button's missing. There's normally a, a little magnifying glass and you can just click on that and it will, get, it will let you structure the, the links from one to another using the mm -hmm. shortest pathway. Maybe it's because I'm not in my own collection. Where does the magnifying glass usually sit? So uh, hold on, I'll share my screen because it... it's right up on the top hand right right hand corner, which is there now. Oh, yeah. I can see it now. So I was just in the wrong screen. Yeah. So if uh, it's on here, and okay. Documentary and if you click... So if you if you click on the feminism and documentary collection, just open up a whole bunch of records, and then we'll show mm -hmm. you how to. And then, yeah, exactly what Alana's done there is a graph query. So you can um, find all the reachable records from, from any record. So it will tell you there's only two records linked to that one. Mm -hmm. And you'll see down the bottom, it gives you the bacon distance, which is how many steps are there. So because there's only two records linked, there's only one, one step. Mm -hmm. um, so but sometimes you'll find a bacon distance of eight or nine. So, that's, so that, that will give you a sense of how close or far away Mm -hmm. two records are from each other and then you can also find the shortest pathway between two records so you get two choices find all the records okay. or the shortest pathway and you just use that little magnifying glass up in the, the top right hand corner okay so you choose another record to find the shortest so you probably need a few more records too mm -hmm. yeah i've got that one there All right. Well, uh, hopefully everyone has enjoyed that introduction to Honey and is fired up about the possibilities for creating collections and links around uh, topics of interest of their own. Um, so I'd like you to join with me and thank you very much, Deb, for back, back, back <laughs> joining My us. My evil twin sister. <laughs> <laughs> for joining us this evening um, and, and thank you to all of you for uh, making it uh, here with us uh, tonight. I hope to see you all back again next month. Again, uh, 9th of September, um, we'll be together to hear from Rich Tuffin from uh, UNE to talk about mapping convict landscapes. So if we're at all interested in digital mapping projects, um, that should be very interesting to hear the stuff that he's been working on. Good luck to everyone in lockdown. Yes, more of us than ever. Oh, look today. at that beautiful dog. Oh my goodness. He's mine. Come here, you little scrumption. Come here. Say hello to the puppy dog. Oh. Hello. <laughs> very cute. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Good night. Bye. Bye.